I think success is having a career where you enjoy it so much that you almost feel guilty that people pay you to do because you are having so much fun every day. Hello. Now I get this question so much that I thought that I should address it with a whole video. And the question is related to in short, you can see what question was asked on my email ID. And if you have any questions, um, you can email it to me and I will try my best to either help you out personally if it's a personal question or address it through a video. You can email me on scientist at reagentblues.org. Now, the question that what do we do um, or how do we choose our PhD topic? Now, it's, it's, it's a very important question. Uh, but you will not be really happy with the answer, but that's the truth. It's pure coincidence in most of the cases or in majority of the cases, I would say. Now, if you would just, I don't know about how things happen abroad, right? But even abroad, I will give you some examples later in the video uh, that even there, how you choose your PhD, to PhD topic or a research topic or your dis dissertation topic is very coincidental. Now, what I mean by that is, if I talk about from a context of an Indian student, when you study your physics, chemistry, maths and biology, let's say in class 12th, when it comes to joining um, college, you have options of engineering, um, you know, then medicine, then, you know, basic sciences and the exposure of Indian students to basic sciences is very low. So when it comes to just basic sciences or even engineering for that matter, you don't know which branch of engineering you're going to choose. It's just on your exposure and your interest. And by that, you sort of try and pick if you have that luxury. In India, you don't even have that luxury to, to pick the topic of your choice. The institute plays a, you know, a, a very dominating role because uh, let's say if you're getting um, you know, your, your favorite topic in IIT Jodhpur, but you're not getting computer science. I, I know students who pick up some other field um, just because they're getting IIT Bombay, you know, so, so there are a lot of things, a lot of factors uh, that come into the picture. Once you pick up, let's say, some topic of your interest, let's say we picked up chemistry. Uh, and again, that was by the level of exposure that we had. Now in bachelors and masters, I have very rarely seen at least uh, my batchmates and my friends that I know there are very few, infinitesimally small number, if I must say, um, that really knew what they wanted to do. Even a, they had a broader idea of what they wanted to do, whether they wanted to do research or not. And even in research, they had no idea what topic they are going to pick up. But those who had exposure or whose parents were researchers, they ended up doing some internship, let's say in IIC Bangalore or in some IITs, summer research internships or in JNCSR. And even there, their interest developed when they went for the internship and they were exposed to a particular field of research. And that is again very coincidental. They really did not know, you know, what field they are going to be working in. It's just that they got the internship. Whosoever professor was interested helping the student intern, he or she picked that student and they got exposure of whatever that professor was doing research in. So it was not something that they really had a choice to pick and they liked that field and then they chose to, you know, pursue it further. Now, let's say by the end of your master's, you have a very broad area of interest. Okay, it, it is very, very rare that you'll have a very small subset of, a, of area that you want to do research in. What I mean by that is organic, area, organic chemistry is a very broad field, right? But within organic chemistry, let's say you want to work on only carbenes. So that sort of interest is or that sort of exposure is very very rare at master's level so you would have a very broad area that you want like, like let's say you want to work in um, organic chemistry or for me if i particularly talk about i really wanted to work in the pharmaceutical industry in in, in the in the domain of drug discovery i was really fascinated at my at during my master's on how drug discovery is done i was actually fascinated by a lot of things but you know, majorly I was fascinated by drug discovery. So within drug discovery itself, if you think about the fields that you have, you have crystallography, you have biochemistry, you have pharmacology, you have you have um, molecular biology, you have pharmaceutics. Um, so there is so much, you know, variation within a broad area of research that you it is very difficult for you to choose where you want it to be, where you want to or where you are going to fit in that drug discovery 
area so i basically chose medicinal chemistry i did my phd in medicinal chemistry and then later i start, start started developing more and more interest towards computational chemistry which is also somewhat implicated or is a very very important um you know domain of of drug discovery for that matter even my supervisor um he was doing synthesis in masters and then i think his supervisor left the institute and then he had to choose a new supervisor and he got exposure to computational biology so even he did not have any idea about computational biology till the time he got exposed to it he really liked it and then now you know he he's doing really well in the field he has a, he, he has a good name for himself so the fundamental point is that it is very very difficult um really to have an idea of where you want to pursue your research it is more or less coincidental i know it's something which is really hard to digest but that is true but yes you can have a very broad idea of where you want to work okay and within the, and when you get exposed to that field you know you will get to know more and more you will be more knowledgeable and then you will be able to wisely pick what exactly you want to do when let's say you do post doctoral studies so it's not like if you pick a topic with in phd um that's it you have to pursue that topic for rest of your life that's not true um you can definitely um diverge from that field but yes the foundations more or less remain the same but for me personally i would say what i did in my phd like in in medicine and chemistry i i am nowhere close to this so i i completely diverged from what i did in my phd but that is again something which is very rare and i really wanted to have a go at computational biology or computational sciences in general so you you can diverge but generally you diverge within that broad area of research so once you have a broad area in mind let's say you start doing your phd you get exposed to more and more fields and if you feel that one field fascinates you more or let's say has more opportunities compared to what you are doing in your phd you, you can definitely switch to that particular domain and i don't get this question honestly if you are a really passionate researcher yes of course you need to sustain yourself and you need to you need to know that what are the opportunities that's that's something i would say uh, that is something important that you really need to think about what are the opportunities in that domain but it's very difficult to predict that and you really can't um you know work in a field where there are a lot of opportunities but you are not really interested in it it just becomes really difficult especially when i talk about research like for example let's talk about the 2023 nobel prize which was given for mrna vaccines right uh, now mrna up until what 2010 2012 um mrna if if i talk about research on vaccines particularly mrna vaccines till 2012 like nobody paid interest then in 2000 even in during to the after 2012 until covid happened nobody was really paying much interest to this mrna vaccine and suddenly within 2 to 3 years you know there was so much interest and then the 2023 nobel prize of course and that is pure coincidence covid would not have happened mrna vaccines would not have give, got that kind of a boost what they got it is very rare that you do not have opportunities for yourself so have some faith have some confidence on yourself like for example when alpha fold came people said oh my god structural biologists will lose their job you know but no any new technology if you are smart now structural biologists are actually using alpha fold to do or to address more important questions so be adaptable and be flexible and to be very honest i love research so much that even if i do not really get to do research in drug discovery and let's say i want i get to do research in some other field because of some constraints i would love to do that and i really resonate with the one of one of the quotes by one of the nobel laureates in 2019 um william kalin who was given the nobel prize in medicine and he says and i resonate so much i think success is having a career where you enjoy it so much that you almost feel guilty that people pay you to do because you are having so much fun every day so literally it happens with me not all all days of course some days are tough but yeah on most of the days i truly resonate with uh, william kalin on this like sometimes i do feel guilty that i'm getting paid for having uh, for doing this because i'm having so 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 much fun that is the kind of professional lifestyle that you should strive for so anyway i hope i did answer some of your questions and uh, helped you clear out a few things if you if you ask me as a master student that what i would be doing or wh- where am i now did i think i would be here no somebody who tells you that they had figured out what they want to want to do and um they exactly imagined where they would be 10 years later in research more or less there's a very high probability they, that they are lying okay so yeah that's about it 
if again if you have any questions that you would want me to answer any consultations anything you can email me over here scientist at reagentblues.org thank you so much for watching this video i will see you in the next video very very soon